President Trump heads to Pennsylvania tomorrow to rally for Rick Saccone in the state special election. The Republican state representative is facing off against Democrat Connor Lamb. They're vying for Tim Murphy's vacant seat. CBS News video journalist Nicole Senga has the latest. You're in Trump country. Are you in Trump country here in Green County? One special election in the heart of Pennsylvania has captured the attention of the nation. Every single day, you are the heart and soul of this campaign. Voters in the place that helped paint Pennsylvania red in 2016 are embracing a Democratic newcomer running for Congress. Now the district that elected Donald Trump by a margin of 20 points is home to a political toss-up. A new survey by Emerson College finds Democrat Connor Lamb with a slight edge over Republican Rick Saccone. This is Pennsylvania 18. Located in the state's southwest corner, the district brings together parts of Allegheny, Green, Washington, and Westmoreland counties. Around one in five of 18's residents belong to a union. And while there are more registered Democrats here than Republicans, many have been voting on the right side of the aisle for years. Democrat Connor Lamb is hoping to change that on March 13th. The Marine made his pitch Tuesday night with a little help from former Vice President Joe Biden. I am happy to stand here today with a leader that everybody likes. This guy reminds me of my bow. He reminds me of my bow because with my bow and with Connor, it's always about the other guy. Lamb is not the only one earning executive branch endorsements. Vice President Mike Pence stumped for retired Air Force officer Saccone last month. President Donald Trump will host a campaign rally on his behalf in Pittsburgh Saturday. The man who calls himself Trump before Trump is banking on the president's popularity to propel him to the finish line. You came out strong for President Trump, and that's what put him over here. Even borrowing phrases from the commander in chief. It's like he said, you're going to get so tired. Oh, there's going to be so much winning. You're going to get tired of winning. We're only one year in, folks. Now, the Pennsylvania state representative tells voters there is too much at stake to lose a Republican majority in Congress. We do not want the left to win, to take any ground from us. They're against the coal industry. They're against the, the working man. Adam Martin, a small business owner who repairs coal mine machinery, agrees a vote for Rick Saccone is a vote of support for the president. I value the fact that we can have a country where my daughter can thrive in. And I think we're on the right path with this president and Rick Saccone. While it's the White House Saccone is focused on, Lamb rarely mentions the Oval Office. Instead, focusing his criticism on Congress with swipes to both sides. Paul Ryan will use the term entitlement reform to talk about Social Security and Medicare as if it's undeserved. The Democrat even disavowed his own party's leader, Nancy Pelosi, something the candidates seem to agree on. Also a point of consensus, President Trump's new proposed tariffs. For too long, China has been making cheap steel, and they've been flooding the market. I think that President Trump is just trying to even that scale. But in debates, candidates clashed on addressing gun violence. We have had too many tragedies with no action whatsoever. The banning a weapon is, is not the answer. Health care entitlements. I've never advocated and never would uh, advocate cutting Social Security or Medicare. I think it's time for Mr. Saccone, if he believes that, to stand up and say that he opposes the $250 billion cut to Medicare. And even their own campaigns. People are laughing at you, Rick. This is the nonsense and deception that my opponent's campaign is all about. <laughs> but Saccone has received an influx in over $9 million from outside GOP investments, funding a number of advertisements calling Lama Pelosi liberal, noting he worked in the Obama administration. Lamb's own campaign has called Saccone another typical politician, boasting the same political hypocrisy. According to the Federal Elections Commission, Lamb raised more than $3.3 million during a seven-week period between January 1st and February 21st, while Saccone raised just over $700,000 in the same period. That's a lot of dollar signs, especially since the candidates will have to do this all over again come November. Following a Pennsylvania Supreme Court decision, the state judiciary has ruled its congressional map in violation of the state constitution. Both candidates will find themselves living in brand new redrawn districts. 
That means that no matter who wins, they'll have to convince another set of Pennsylvania voters to re-elect them in just eight months. And Nicole Sanga joins me now to talk about this. Are you surprised, Nicole, at how much money is being poured into a race that really will only last a few months? This is only going to last eight months. Whoever wins will have their Washington, D.C. office for that long, and then they're going to have to do this all over again. The typical congressional seat actually costs around $1.5 million. I would not be surprised if all said and done. This costs upwards of $15 million for both candidates involved. And it's interesting looking at the actual campaigns and and how the narratives have shifted on both sides, Rena. Uh, the GOP outside investments into this race have been shifting from talking about the tax break over to more meat and potato issues like uh, crime and immigration. So they've been calling Lamb an Obama appointee who supported sanctuary cities, even looking at his time as a federal prosecutor, saying that he agreed to too many plea deals with drug kingpins. Mm. And it's a little tough for them to pin him on some of the issues given that he doesn't have a legislative record. On the Democratic side, they've actually been zeroing in on this GOP tax break, saying that it's going to take money away from entitlement programs like Social Security and Medicare. This is an older district, District 18, so, so entitlements are big. that issue matters to these voters. Mm, that makes sense. So you have a district that President Trump killed and did really well in 2016. How is he faring now? He did very well. In fact, the smallest county in this district actually elected Trump by a margin of over 40 yeah. percent. A new poll out today, though, from Monmouth University shows that 51 percent of likely voters still support the president, while 47 percent do not. Uh, also interesting in that poll, nearly six in 10 voters say that they're aware of the president's endorsement of Rick Saccone, the Republican contender here. But 86 percent say that has no impact on their vote. Hmm. So uh, looking towards the appearance that Trump will make, that joint campaign appearance this Saturday with Rick Saccone, mm -hmm. uh, there are two things we should be looking at here. Um, the first is voter turnout and how his appearance will drive voter interest in this election. I don't know that his appearance will change any voter's mind, but it might rile up his base so much so that more people turn out to the polls here. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing to look at is Connor Lamb, the individual, he is not Hillary Clinton by any means. He's much more conservative, much more moderate here. Uh, so it will be interesting to see if voters look to him as sort of a middle ground candidate. And uh, we'll, we'll either find out on Tuesday if this, this race turns out to be more like the Alabama governor election, which was a big upset, or close but no cigar for the Democrats, which was the case in Georgia 6 and South Carolina 5. It'll be fascinating to see exactly how this ends. Yes. Nicole Senga, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And you can watch President Trump's rally for Republican candidate Rick Saccone tomorrow. It's planned for 7 p.m. Eastern, and we'll have live coverage right here on CBSN.